Welcome students. Thanks for tuning in. You should be uh, in my secondary math one period three class if you are watching this. This is for the week of April 27th through May 1st. And what I want to do with this week with you guys is sections 3.1, which is on functions. Remember, functions are a key, key concept in secondary math one. And also 3.4, which is graphing linear equations in standard form. So my plan is I'm going to walk you through it with the uh, computer and show you exactly what that has with all the tutorials and examples. And then I'm going to come back to the whiteboard and do a few problems with you from the actual assignment. And I think that should really help you with this set of problems. All right, we should be in our, you guys should be in your ebook. And if you go to page 104, you're going to find section 3.1. All right, on 3.1, the main part of this is dealing with functions. And we spent quite a bit of time this year talking about functions. Remember, a function is where every input has exactly one output. So they give you some examples here because it can come in a few different varieties here. If they just give you a set of ordered pairs, you're looking for every input. So notice how negative 2, the input of negative 2 gets sent to 2. And it's the only one that negative 2 goes to. Negative 1 only goes to 2. 0 only goes to 2. 1 goes to 0 and 2 goes to 0. So every input, every x value has exactly one, val one y value. This would be a function, yes. But notice on C here, your input of 0 gets mapped to 5 and 0 gets mapped to 6. So an input of 0 has two different outputs. So that is not a function. And you can go through the monitoring progress. They give you a couple other examples there. Please check those out. Okay. Another way to determine if you have a function or not is what's called the vertical line test. So if you were given a graph, all you have to do is draw a vertical line. And the catch with this is if it ever hits it in more than one point, it's not a function. If it never hits it in more than one point, it is a function. So this first example right here is a function. Every vertical line that you could draw only hits that in one spot. That is a function. This is not a function because this dotted line right here hits it in two spots, not a function. Again, they walk you through some examples there, some pretty good ones, so please check those out. Okay, now a function, you could think of it as a function machine. You input something and you do something to it and you come out with something. So for this one, the input, another name for that is the domain. The output, another name is the range. So you've got domain, range. So on this, when it asks you guys to find the domain and range of the range of the function represented, remember the domain are your x values, your inputs. So this point right here has an x coordinate of negative three. This point right here is an x coordinate of negative one. This one has an x of 1, and this one has an x of 3. So your domain for this would be negative 3, negative 1, 1, and 3. The range is the output. The output, so the y values. This one goes down negative 2, so negative 2. This one is 0, positive 2, and positive 4. Okay, now remember with something like this, the domain for this, you're going to have to write this as a compound inequality. Your x values for this, the lowest value is negative 2, the highest value is positive 3. It's everything in between those. Think about that. Every This graph here, the input, the x values have to go between negative 2 and positive 3. So the way you write that is with a compound inequality. Your x value is greater than or equal to negative 2. And at the same time, it's less than or equal to a positive 3 in between those two. All right, it gives you a couple other examples there. So again, please check out those. All right, then again, we talk about independent and dependent variables. Independent variable is your x. 
So X independent domain all mean the same thing. The output is your Y values. That is your, ind your dependent variable. So your dependent is the Y or the range. Your independent is the X or your domain. All right, now when they walk you through this one, and again, this guy is the function Y equals negative three X plus 12 represents the amount of juice that's left in a bottle after you take X number of gulps. So according to this, your input is how many gulps you take, your output is how many ounces of fluid are left in the bottle. So notice on this, if you don't take any gulps at all, zero, you've got 12 ounces. So in other words, that bottle when it's full has 12 ounces in it. You don't take any gulps, there's 12 ounces. If you take a gulp, it's down to nine ounces. That basically means you're losing three ounces every gulp. That's what this minus three X represents. That's your rate of change. It goes down by three ounces every time you take a gulp. This means that four gulps, you don't have any anything left in the bottle, zero ounces. So your range for this, your output would be the 12, nine, six, three, and zero. Your input or your domain is zero, one, two, three, and four. Again, they give you two really nice examples here with how many avocados you'd have left after you make B number of batches of guacamole. Uh, we did look at these, this was in class, obviously a long time ago, but um, these are really key type of problems to be able to do. So please check out those monitoring progress problems. Okay, and then I assign you guys some problems here and I walk you through a few of these. Uh, but remember, you're looking at your input output for this, your input and your output. So for this, you know, find the domain and range. Again, domain is your X values. Your range is your Y values. All right. Then we look at section 3.4. So 3.4, you're going to have to go back up here to your page and we're going to go to page 130. 130. All right. For this one, we're going to look at linear equations in standard form. So remember, standard form was the AX plus BY is equal to C. And with this, a couple key things. Remember, horizontal lines are when the equation is Y is equal to something. So for this equation, let's say we're Y equal to 3. Then you'd, you'd go up three units. This line right here would be the graph of Y equals 3 because x could be anything as long as your y coordinate's always three. So y equals is always a horizontal line. x equals is always a vertical line. This might be x equals two, for example, right? If it was x equals negative three, it would be a vertical line over here, like this. All right, they give you a couple examples here with that. Those should be really straightforward for you guys. Okay, then we come out here, and if you go to page 131, it talks about the x-intercept and the y-intercept. The whole idea with standard form equations is graphing these is to find your two intercepts. To find the x-intercept, the x-intercept is where a line crosses the x-axis. Well, on that, you know the y-value's got to be zero. So to solve this one, if this equation right here, if I want to find the x-intercept, I just make y be zero. So what are you left with? Well, you're left with three x is equal to 12. X would equal four. So notice down here, if they graph this, x is four. The y-intercept is when the x value is zero. So if I made the x be zero, I'm left with four y equals 12. Well, four times three is equal to 12. So zero, three is a solution for this. So you find your two intercepts. Those are the only two points you need. You make your line through those two, and that is your graph. They give you guys a couple other problems with monitoring progress, so please check those out. Okay. Then they give you an example here with number of tables. Check this one out. It's good as far as you're setting up your equation with a standard form type problem. And again, to solve this, you're going to find your two intercepts. So on this one, your x-intercept, if you cover up the y value, you're going to be left with 6x equals 180. Well, 6 times 30 is 180. 
So x is 30. This would mean you could have 30 small tables and zero large tables to fit the 180 people. The other point is going to be your y-intercept. How do you find that? You let the x be zero. So in other words, suppose all you had were large tables. 10 times y equals 180, y would equal 18. You're going to graph those two points, you're going to connect them up, and any point on this line would be a solution to it. But you do have to remember on this, you're looking for just solid points where it hits exactly. And here, right here, is exactly where it hits. So one solution would be 20 for x, 6 for y. 20 for x and 6 for y would be a solution. So check this one out. They give you a monitoring progress also with this. And then some problems to do. I'm going to do a couple problems here on the whiteboard for you guys with this and help you out and check it out.